So, literally the second before I'm due to start filming, someone decides to play loud music next door. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> so, you join me again in the shed. Last time, if you recall, we, against better common knowledge, decided to cut the sycamore cap flush with the body, even though it's just screwed on at this point. And I also did a little bit of carving along that top edge there, which took a very, very long time using one of these basic Silverline cheapy rasps. But, you know, I've got good control with it and I've got a good carve out of it. Now, one thing I mentioned last time was that I would quite like to try the angle grinder method with a sanding disc or a rotor rasp, something along those lines. Now, not having a lot of experience, obviously, with this kind of thing, um, I went looking at my local tool suppliers and they only tended to have the more standard kind of discs that you would get for an angle grinder, which would be things like uh, the actual cutting discs or wire wool discs and things like that. Um, the other kind of disc that I was a little bit less sure of was one of these, which is known as a, a flapper disc, which is effectively lots of little strips of, well, sandpaper basically, stra strapped to a rubber disc. Now, those in theory would be okay, but what worries me is what they're typically designed for is clearing all of the paint and rust and things like that off big chunks of metal. So I would imagine that it will eat through material quite quickly. And with it being a sort of a multi-layered uh, surface, it, it's probably not quite as accurate as a solid disc, like one of the, the rotor rasp discs. Um, but the more and more I thought about it, I was just kind of keen to give this a little try and see what it, see what it would do. So I think I am actually going to set up a bit of uh, the scrap wenge and see what this would actually do to it, because it might actually save us a lot of time. There's no reason I can't go and get one of those rotor rasps at a later date, but I think those those rasps are something like £30 for one disc, whereas this was £2. So, worth a try. So we're going to give that a little bit of a try. We haven't got a lot of time today. Um, if we get time afterwards, we might get onto some template making, but I've got some tools to sharpen and things for future jobs. So I might just kind of strike this day off as a bit of a, as a bit of a preparation day more than anything. But let's see how, how we get on with the, with the angle grinder. You never know. We could uh, make some quick progress with the carving. So I've attached the cutting disc to the angle grinder there. As you can see, I've actually removed the safety guard which is never really recommended, but I am just using a sanding disc. I'm not using a diamond cutter or anything like that. And I will be wearing gloves and whatnot as an extra layer of protection anyway. So I'm just going to find a piece of scrap wench and get it secured down to the table and we'll give this a go on it and see what it does. The fact that I can see that this advertises it as suitable for metal, wood and plastic suggests hopefully it isn't going to eat away at things too violently. Um, just for the record, by the way, this is uh, 80 grit, the paper on this, so it's still fairly coarse.
All right. So I don't know how well you can see here, but I initially tried just dragging this over here. Naturally, it tries to drift left or right, but I didn't find it too bad to control. And I also tried to see what it would be like to try and carve a point as you might have on a horn, obviously not that pointy, but it's actually, it's worked really well. I mean, it does move the material rapidly, no doubt about that, you have to be careful. But it, it felt like something that I could get used to relatively quickly. Um, I also wanted to know as well what it would be like to try and carve like a bowl out of something using the point of the disc. Um, it's certainly possible. Again, it does it quite quickly. As you can see there, I've only done it quite roughly. But I, I like the feel of it, it feels positive. So I think I'm going to do some more marking up on the body and then I might actually try having a little go with this. I think I will actually just be using this to take the majority of the material off and then I'll do finishing either with the file or by hand, obviously. But I think it could definitely speed things up a lot is the point. So what kind of markings do we actually need as an indicator here? Well, first I'm going to have to find a ruler and a pencil. So, what kind of markings do we need? Well, first of all, this area that we've already been working on, we decided we could afford to come down a little bit lower than we've already got. The cap that I've got is over three quarters of an inch, and the body, well, the body where it's still fully thick, is two inches. Now, we only need a total of two inches. So by my calculations, even if we thin down the top a little bit to the point where it is three quarters of an inch, that still leaves us about one and a quarter inch that we would need. So realistically, one and a quarter inch would be the maximum that we'd want the body to go to. And that would be absolutely fine. And that's only where the neck pocket is. Now, if I just mark one and a quarter inch along here in a few places. I love how I keep, keep uh, switching between metric and imperial, by the way, just to keep you on your toes. I do prefer metric myself, but just everything seems to be done in inches on anything that's manufactured to kind of old specs, so there you go. We know very, very roughly and it, it only has to be rough. That, that is our maximum line. Now, I did a little bit of just sort of eyeing up yesterday where I would hold the, the body next to me and imagine I'm playing it and try and imagine in my hand sort of how thin I would want this thing to be. And I definitely think where I drew lines here originally is where we need to bring it down to, otherwise it will will feel too thick. I'm not, I do like hollow bodies, but I'm not really a, a big, thick, jazz box fan. So actually, that's great. If we just carry on by eye, the maximum line, that's gonna work out quite nicely. Becomes less important around here. But we need to remember our line from yesterday. It's where the hollowness starts, if you like. We need to get back up to pretty much full thickness by then. Which I think is going to look a little bit weird, to be honest, but I'm willing to go with it. Still, if nothing else, get some weight removed. And as I say, that is just a rough guide. Now,
I am still toying with the idea of a body carve. And the more I think about it, the more off the better really. But given that we've got so little material to work with, it might not be doable. Not to any significant amount anyway. I definitely think uh, working to that level of accuracy with the angle grinder might be pushing it a little bit too far. But on that note, again, our body's two inches, our internal route just over an inch and a half. Let me do metric because I think that's what I routed it in. Yeah, it's four centimeters deep. And five, yeah, so we've we've only got about a centimeter on the back. So realistically, we don't want to be going any deeper than about, well, half a centimeter with any carve. So half a centimeter, that's nothing really. I think I'll probably stick to the file for doing the body section, just so I've got that level of control. But I still think it'll be fun to have a little go with the angle grinder and just see if I can ruin all the work that I did yesterday. I'm a little bit concerned actually that it's, it's quite difficult to see the dark pencil on the dark wood. So I think I might actually just put some little layers of masking tape on there as a guide. Right, so I can more or less do anything I like within the boundaries of that masking tape. I should be okay. Wouldn't necessarily look all that great, but it should be okay. This whole system of just clamping a bar across everything that you want to hold down, by the way, seems to work really, really well. Right. Let's grind, baby. Just took a quick break there. Um, I'll take the camera down in a second and let you show show you how it's going. Um, very pleased so far actually. It's not too bad at all to control. I've noticed tiny amount of tear out in one spot at one point as I was sanding down, but it wasn't a final finish or anything, so not really a problem. It's surprisingly easy to carve with actually. Um, I feel more and more confident confident with it every second that I use it. The only thing I would say to anyone who is attempting this, number one, dust mask abs absolutely essential. I mean, you know me, I don't normally normally bother when I'm using the router table and things like that, but especially without a dust extraction system, which of course I don't have, it's absolutely essential that you, that you have the dust mask if you're gonna do this. Um, likewise as well, I don't normally bother with safety goggles. Um, because I wear glasses, so they afford me some protection. I know it's not 
the best, but I'm getting loads of dust in my eyes. Obviously it won't help that I've got the guard off this either, but um, I definitely, if the shop was open, I would straight away right now actually go and buy some of those ones like you get at school, that form of rubber seal around your eyes. I will do that for next time. Um, but it's, it's going okay so far. Um, I'll take the camera off and let you have a look. Zoom out here. So I've mainly concentrated on getting this horn down to the tape. If you might, it was sticking out right the way up, up here before. So I've kind of carved that down and brought the curve around this side as well. I will actually do a little bit more on this because I want to make sure that this this ridge is visually in the right place where I want it to be. I think it just needs to come over to the right a little bit as it stands at the moment. We're gonna take just a little bit more material off here and we've got this this horn still to carve down to these point to this point here. So we're about halfway there, but uh, it's lots of fun actually, apart from the dust in the eyes. Well, I have to say, about what, 15 minutes with an angle grinder? And I'm very, very pleased with that. It obviously needs a final sand. Well, several sessions of sanding just to get it all nice and perfect, but I'm very pleased with that. One thing that's weird is, I, one of the reasons I actually stopped when I did was I can see a little almost metallic fleck in there. And I've really got no idea what it is. It almost looks pearlescent. I don't know if there's been like a worm or something in it, but can't see any holes or 
what, but there's there's something in the grain of the wood there, but I think I'm just gonna leave it, at least for now. So I wanna continue on with that belly carve, and I think I might even actually do that with the, the angle grinder because my, my confidence is really growing with it now. Let's give you a close look at the camera there. So you can see I've contoured those horns right down. And I've got quite a, a deep carve now. I'm noticing actually there, there's still that little hump. From the top it looked, looked pretty spot on, but yes, there is a little bit of a hump there. So I want to try and even that line out. I might do that with files or with, with the final sanding. Got a nice little point on that and then it sweeps over towards where the belly curve will be. Lovely stuff. Right, yeah, so I've just about recovered from all of that dust. I wanted to look at marking out the belly calf some more. So I'm just going to redraw that line where we need to start worrying about the thickness of the body. And we want the belly calf to stop about here. And we want no more than half a centimetre of calf. See, there is a tiny bit of a margin for error, error but it is tiny. Figure out how we finish that end off when we get to it. And if I end up taking it that far, maybe so be it. Same again on the other side. So again, in the wind and the rain and the creaking of the shed, stick some masking tape on as a rough guide. To be honest, this would be really perfectly doable with the file. I'm just enjoying using the grinder now. <laughs> right, so I'm just going to use the lightest of touches here and just try and skim the surface.
just have a quick once over with the random orbital and then we'll take a proper look. So there we go. As you can see, just a really subtle, slight carve on it. So there we have it. I think that's a good place to stop for the day. Um, I don't know how well the camera will pick this up or whether the autofocus will work properly, but um, I'm very, very chuffed with that rough back carve that we've put on there. There's very little work left to do in terms of sanding and whatnot to even it up. To be honest with you, just off camera, just before I uh, filmed this little segment, I did actually take a file just to this edge, just to get this, this line sort of consistent all the way along. But other than that, it was perfectly fine with the angle grinder. Um, couldn't ask for more. That cheap little sanding disc has been absolutely fine. I'd be quite happy using that again in the future. I'm uh, not entirely sure what we're going to be doing next time, uh, possibly a little bit more of the same. It all depends on what tools come in the post, uh, unless my girlfriend Sam's watching, in which case there are no tools in the post. Um, if you'd like to see more tools in the post, send money to PO Box Shed. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, that's it for now. Um, I'll see you next time. Goodbye.